this video, I will talk about Web 4. Now, in the news, you may have heard about Web 3, which is an extension of the previous Web 1 and Web 2. We are currently at Web 2. Now, in the early days of the Internet, it was called the Web 1. Web 1 is when in 1990s, mid-1990s, they made the internet the, from the ARPANET. And basically before, it was just a way to connect computers to each other. And you can send digital mail to each other. You can send pictures, text, whatever. And you can even play uh, simple games uh, by sending chess moves. Uh, from one computer to another so you don't need to use the post office to send mail or use a telephone well it's, it's similar to telephone but it, you actually have it on a computer it's more powerful you can do more stuff um, so basically that was what web one was you have a Netscape browser and you can connect to uh, servers that serve you information. Now this was born out of the mainframe and clients. The mainframe were powerful computers that host the data and the clients were just like uh, dumb uh, machines that connect to it. And um, later on as the client machine got more powerful, as the devices got more uh, cheaper, uh, regular people could uh, purchase more and more computers and that helped the uh, web 1 transition to the web 2 now web 2 uh, became uh, more uh, popular when apps were made and then uh, many big companies like Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Apple and many of those uh, companies that creates power, uh, that generate power, um, create these servers, people who create these servers. And what that does is it allowed um, people to own devices, uh, mobile devices that can uh, host powerful applications. So now instead of just uh, a mainframe and a Netscape client browser to connect to the data. Uh, you have uh, more powerful mobile phones or PCs that can uh, host powerful applications. And this allowed, um, like, for example, you can have gaming and you can have uh, games on your uh, mobile phone and you can have. Um, uh, government controlled or company controlled uh, big applications like Facebook and um, even Twitter so these were like more like uh, they were decentralized but to a point where uh, they're actually controlled by companies or governments so for example let's say um, the governments control the uh, endpoints of the internet the internet f infrastructure and um, they control the power generation and companies control the big applications they created the cloud and basically like uh, Facebook they own all the data and they allow uh, people to connect with each other but it goes through a big huge server now things like Twitter and Apple and Amazon and Microsoft, all these companies, they own the actual communication structure and the government owns the money and the power generation. So basically, you the Internet Web 2 is like that. Um, government owns the endpoints and companies own the communication applications. And these communication applications could be like uh, apps or a cloud, on the cloud type uh, Amazon web services. So right now we're transitioning into Web 2.5. Now Web 2.5 
is like Bitcoin and where they have blockchains which are like public ledgers on the internet where anybody can look at it and so they're not really owned by one company or the government it's that anybody can look at it and they live on multiple computers now that's web 2.5 web 3 is is trying to move the data away from the companies and the government onto the onto uh, more uh, computers outside of control of the government and outside of the control of uh, the com the big companies so when they talk about centralized and decentralized stuff you know that's about web 3 so what they want to do is want to make it so that uh, people can have control over digital money creation, digital, digital money ownership, and uh, transferring of <coughs> digital money. So, for example, uh, instead of money going through a central bank system and where the, uh, the government creates the money, prints it, uh, in uh, blockchain-based money, uh, the creation is done by multiple computers and every transaction is done publicly on multiple computers on the public ledger that anybody can look at so there's less privacy but it's more decentralized and um, instead of like for, for example Facebook owning all the data uh, of communication of one person to another they would put the uh, ownership of the data of the cloud on multiple computer computers so it's uh, when you buy a digital token as diesel and so what what you can do is you, you own you own a piece of the uh, network you own a piece of the data so when when different people connect to each other um, they're not connecting through one big company they connect they own actually part of the process and these are called decentralized applications. And uh, what happens is that people who make like changes to the software, it will live on multiple computers, multiple people, and um, they can govern what govern what happens to the application. And the money is printed. People can create new coins, and money is created by people uh, who want to group together and create a new finance system outside of central control now these are all good and um, the problem is that these are web 3 the problem is that the uh, government and the companies still own the uh, the big stuff the power generation like for example how are you gonna get uh, electricity and uh, how are you gonna um, create who's gonna create the network the physical network connecting um, like for example computers to computers who's going to invest in that so there, there's the problem with web 3 is that once all the applications and the money generation are uh, done uh, by multiple people uh, not owned by the government government or the uh, corporations there's still a problem as who's going to mine um, coal and uh, create energy so you can uh, run your internet servers or your computers and stuff like that so what web 4 the next step is um, to actually have people own the connection the, inf the infrastructure of, and each person will own their own node and become a node on the internet so how would you do that now what that what needs to be done is uh, people will need to have a way to carry electricity batteries on themselves and how they generate the electricity to to um, to charge those batteries on themselves is a big problem that needs to be solved with web 4 for example, Apple is going to be releasing a uh, Apple Visor or Apple View. It's something that goes on your head. And this is just for AR. 
augmented reality or virtual reality VR and maybe it's uh, like a meta world like the matrix but the biggest step uh, beyond that is that uh, each person will actually own a device that like a Wi-Fi station each person becomes a Wi-Fi station and each person will own will carry a battery that lasts the whole day when they're outside and uh, you can keep it in the home and plug it into the electricity uh, when you are at home. So when you are outside, your visor can be constantly on for at least a day, connected to that big power source. So you might the the power source will be a big battery. I'm not going to go into the technology. It'll probably be lithium uh, or something like that. But in the future, maybe something better. It will last at least uh, a day or a few days until you get back home and plug it into the uh, outlet. And you will provide a connection for anybody, anywhere. And how you will provide the connection is you could go through your local people who also have our individual nodes and they become, each person becomes a part of the internet. And if, if they are too far away from a local person that you can try to transmit packets you can actually transmit up to the internet satellites, I mean the uh, satellites up, uh, circling Earth. And that is what the next step is. So if you are very far in a remote desert, you can actually connect up to the rotating satellites. And if you are uh, locally very close to someone else, you can connect to their backpack and to their uh, internet device. And each person will have at least enough power to uh, connect to each other for, for anybody who wants to uh, transmit data. And of course, they will hold enough uh, disk space or memory space to transmit uh, packets and then to have last at least a day of transmission and receiving. So basically, the whole Web 4 would be like people who are mobile. Uh, Wi-Fi stations. Each person, uh, maybe in their clothes or maybe in a backpack, they will carry a big ba a battery. Now, in the future, of course, battery will get smaller and smaller, so it won't be that inconvenient. And maybe there was standard made where the um, the battery can fit around uh, you as like an a accessory, like shoes. How we wear shoes, you can maybe wear a battery that's like a clothing part of a pants or maybe part of a belt, or even part of the headset. So, and people will be carrying glasses, and basically you can uh, stay at home and connect to the internet using your visor, or you can go outside and um, uh, walk around, and you can do AR, VR, and you also be part of the whole world. So, you, each person in the web four, will become their own internet node and people can visit you be in your meta world and your matrix or you can connect to others you own your own applications you you and then uh, people can connect to you and you can uh, so basically web3 will have all these tokens new tokens new uh, decentralized money creation and web4 will be that you have your own uh, metaverse you have your own uh, way to connect to others people when they connect to you you are part of the internet in your own world you can uh, create all these uh, new connections new realities uh, based on the the meta world that you created on your node on the on the internet so this is uh, my take on the future of web 4 Hope you enjoyed this video. Please give video a like and we'll see you next time.